kind of feelings we have when we hear that word, Father. That word, Father. Some of us will feel a sense of loss this Christmas season. Maybe because we had fathers who were wonderful but are no longer with us. And maybe for some others because we have unfulfilled longings for the kind of father that we never had. So it can be a difficult word. So how comforting is it then to read of the birth of a child whose name will be called Everlasting Father? Under his care, under his protection and his provision, we are safe and we will be satisfied for all of eternity. Notice Isaiah says, everlasting father. That's just a way of saying that born unto us is the perfect father, Jesus. Many people have negative images of God. They think of God as being some impersonal guard, God that is, you know, the Star Wars, may the force be with you kind of thing. Some people think of God as a powerless God, like some old man with a big white beard sitting in a rocking chair somewhere. Some think of God as an irate judge with no compassion, just waiting to condemn people to hell. But look, look how Isaiah describes Jesus as my perfect father. Last week, we learned that Jesus was God in the flesh. And Jesus even affirmed that information for us well, here on earth when he said in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. And here, Jesus is described as our everlasting Father. You see, that tells me that God is not a power, but a person, a personality. And I like that. Because I can relate to a person. A little girl was having trouble going to sleep in her room because there was a thunderstorm outside. So she ran into her mom and daddy's room and asked to sleep with them. And her dad said, honey, just go back to bed. God is in your room with you. She said, well then, how about I sleep in here with mom and you go sleep with God? <laughs> Just because we can't see God does not mean that God is not real. God came to earth and put on skin. And God's name with skin is Jesus. And Jesus is our everlasting Father. We can read and hear that scripture for years and never get the meaning of it because we don't take time to think about it. There's only one thing wrong with Jesus as our everlasting Father. Too many people, as I said, for them the name Father is not a positive name. It tends to stir up memories of an unhappy childhood. Some earthly fathers are very inconsistent. They can be very selfish and moody and just downright flat out mean to their children. You've heard it said, you just wait until your father gets home. Now dads, I want to caution you. Be careful of the language you're giving your children of the name that you carry as father. And that is why it's so important to notice what Isaiah says, that Jesus is our everlasting father. Because you see, by calling Jesus everlasting Father, Isaiah is telling us some important facts. And I'm going to just give you those facts quickly today. The first fact is, Jesus is the perfect Father. Everything that you have ever dreamed a Father could be, everything that you ever wanted from your relationship with your earthly Father, Jesus is and will be for you. Your Messiah, your Savior, will forever be perfectly 
father life in the way that he shepherds and leads you. In Jesus, we have a perfect father forever, forever. And sadly, the word father doesn't always bring to mind somebody who shepherds and affirms and stays close. Instead, it connotes adjectives like distant, aloof, passive, absent, unreliable, selfish, uncaring, and cruel. Even among Christian families, far too many children experience emotional indifference and self-centered neglect from their dads. Yes, that's sad, but yes, it's the truth. So it is important to understand this concept because that is not the case with Jesus. Jesus, your everlasting Father, came down at Christmas, right, to a broken and sinful world to fill our hearts with heaven's love and to teach us to love one another that way. Jesus came to make us sons and daughters. We were his enemies and Jesus came to make sons and daughters out of his enemies. This is the Father's gift to us at Christmas. I'm gonna tell you, on earth, no matter how good our fathers might have been, they were not perfect. Isaiah is saying Jesus represents the perfect father. Look at Isaiah 9, verse 7. He will rule with perfect fairness and justice. The number one complaint about fathers is their inconsistency. But Jesus is perfectly consistent. Jesus is always fair. Jesus is always just. Imagine for a moment everything you wish your earthly father would have been to you. If you were to multiply those wonderful qualities by one million, you wouldn't even come close to the way Jesus will treat you as an everlasting father. Because you see, Jesus is never absent, nor is Jesus abusive. Instead, Jesus is close and caring and attentive. Jesus represents a father, one who has deep concern for the welfare of his children. He says, look at the birds of the air, he tells his followers. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you of not more value than they? Jesus encourages us not to worry about clothing or food or shelter or anything else we need in life. Because Jesus assures us that our everlasting Father will meet our needs as long as we will put the time and the energy into pursuing God's kingdom and into pursuing God's righteousness. I'm not saying that it is easy for every Christian to embrace, to embrace the concept of God as a heavenly father. It's not, and I know that. And this is where it is so important to remember that Jesus and the Father, his heavenly father, are one God. So the face of Jesus is the same face of God. Jesus is our everlasting Father. And when we need an image of a close and caring and attentive parent, we can look directly to Jesus. And I think that's good news. I know it's good news for some people, and I've had people that come to understand that concept and have found a new relationship and healing. Look, when Jesus is having dinner with his disciples, one of his followers, Philip, says to him, 
Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus says to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. The word of God comes to us more clearly through Jesus, the one who is the flesh and blood appearance of God in human life. In the beginning was the word, says the first chapter of John. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. The word is eternal. The word of God, the word is God. The word lives among us. That is amazing. The appearance of the word of God in human form shows us that Jesus and our everlasting father are one and the same. Here's the second fact. Jesus wants a relationship with me, with you. Since Jesus Christ is a perfect father, that means that he wants a relationship with us. God has made it possible for me to become a child of God. And some might ask, well, if Jesus is the perfect father and he created us all, then aren't we all God's children? Well, that depends on what you mean by child. If you mean, did Jesus create everyone? The answer is yes. But we all understand, I think, that there is more to being a father than just procreation. Just because you may have procreated a dozen children doesn't mean you've really been a father to them. So then, how can we make sure that we become a child of God? That we become God's children? I mean, if God really desires and really wants a relationship with me as a father, then how can I make sure that I become God's child? It all begins with a relationship. Look at Galatians 3, 26. For you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. It is faith in Jesus that gets you into the family. There is only one way to start a relationship with God, and it is through faith. John 14, 6, we hear Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And John, chapter 1, verse 12, tells us that it takes two things to become a child of God. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Did you see the two parts? Did you catch that? Believe and receive. If you have never done those two things, please do. Maybe today. The fact three, our relationship with Jesus is never ending. And this, for people who've lost loved ones, and for us who seek eternal life and have questions, is so important. Our relationship with Jesus is never ending. That Hebrew phrase, and the word translated uh, the everlasting father, we could actually literally translate that to say father of eternity. And the Hebrew word translated everlasting has the concept of without end, never ending. The next verse, Isaiah 9, 7, that you heard, says of the Messiah, Messiah of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. So as the everlasting father, the Messiah will be a father. And 
his fatherhood will be without end. Isn't that good news? I think so. What do you think about that? Never ending consistent. God's children never have to fear being disowned. I know that there's a lot of debate about whether or not a child of God can ever lose their salvation. Okay? Some say that if a believer sins, they lose their relationship that they once had with Jesus. But you know where I go when I want to know the truth? I go to Jesus. And I find that in the scripture. And what does Jesus say about that? Well, in John 10, 27 through 30, we see that he says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand, and I and the, fa and the Father at one. You see, once you begin that relationship with Jesus Christ, Jesus becomes your everlasting Father. That babe of Bethlehem, the gift that we receive unto us, Nothing can separate you from God. You don't have to worry. You try. You do your best. You trust and you believe by faith. Romans 8 and 35 through 39 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Nothing Nothing, no thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is with us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Nothing. Once you commit your life to Jesus, it's irreversible. Since Jesus is our perfect Father, Jesus will not disown you. You can't even take it back. That's why the decision to give your life to Jesus is something serious to think about. So how comforting, I ask you, how comforting is it to read his name shall be called Everlasting Father? Once we become a child of Christ, we are his and he is ours forever. Forever. There will be no goodbyes with Jesus. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from his love. Not even death itself. There's a message for you. Because you know why? Death only brings us nearer to Christ. There is no such thing as unfathering Christ and there is no unchilding us. Charles Spurgeon, a theologian, once said, he is everlasting father to those who trust in him. He said, praise God to our eternal security in Christ, our everlasting father. Isn't that great? Isn't it great to know that Jesus was more than just some kind of great teacher or prophet or leader? Isn't it great to hear that Jesus wants to be your everlasting father? If you will just believe and receive him today, you can become his daughter or son because I'm Bethlehem. And this Christmas and every Christmas, that is God's gift unto us to you. What a gift. Let's pray. Do you feel close enough to God to call God your Father? Do you have a relationship with Him? 
If you'd like to become God's child today and have a perfect father, would you pray something like this in your heart right now? God, I want Jesus to be my father, my everlasting father. I'm not going to run away anymore. I do believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus died for me. Will you forgive me for looking for peace in all the wrong places? Forgive my sins. I give my life to you right now, Jesus. Give me the peace that I've been looking for. Eternal creator of all life, thank you for the remembrance that it is such a time as this, the season of Christmas, that your heart goes out to the fear of humanity as we meditate on the incompleteness of our lives. And we are reminded that unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he will save us from our disobedience, from the guilt, the pride that separate us from you and from one another. Thank you, thank you, God, that in Christ we have been accepted just as we are, and that your acceptance can infuse in us the power to become what you have created us to be. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn, if you would.